you think about hot hatches, many of you may regard the Volkswagen Golf GTI as being the founder of said genre. The Mark I Golf GTI is likely to be regarded as the godfather, and for years the Mark II Golf GTI has lived in its predecessor's shadow. In recent years, values of the Mark I GTI have rocketed to a point where they're not readily accessible to many people in the market for this kind of vehicle. And this is where the Mark II Golf GTI comes in strong. In this episode, we're going to speak with James, who's owned his Mark II GTI for over 10 years and has cherished and looked after the car from day one. Okay, James, thanks very much for bringing your Mark II Golf GTI down. I understand you've owned this car for quite a long time. Do you want to tell us a bit about why you bought it? Um, yeah, so I've, I've had it um, coming up to 15 years now. Um, and I was actually, it was actually a gift. <laughs> really? From, yeah, from um, basically when I was like 16, uh, I really wanted like an old car to do up and loved classic cars and stuff. And um, my dad's mate said he had this old Golf. It was been sat in his barn for like six, seven years. And if I wanted that, I could have it because he was going to scrap awesome. it. Oh, um, yeah, don't want to scrap it. Yeah. yeah, so I got it as a naive 16 year old yeah. and uh, yeah, tinkered away hour after hour. Um, you know, more, probably breaking more stuff than I was fixing. <laughs> but um, yeah, so sort of here we are today, really. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it looks fantastic. Um, yeah, I can see you, you definitely looked after it. And I was actually going through your build thread. That's <laughs> yeah. all the amazing things you've done to it over the, over the sort of 15 years you've had it. So yeah, so you've had it for a really long time. So what sort of things, like what condition was it in when you got it? Was there much to do? Um, yeah, it was pretty It was pretty rough at the time. Um, obviously, it'd been off the road for sort of six, seven years. So um, yeah, it was, it was in pretty bad shape. Um, needed a bit of welding to get through an MOT. Uh, brakes, all that kind of yeah. normal, yeah. normal sort of stuff. So um, corrosion issues. Corrosion issues, standard. yeah, standard. Um, but I put a new battery on it, changed the oil, and it kicked, kicked straight up after after right. all that time. Yeah. Um, and I'm still using the same engine and block and everything today. Yeah. Um, I was saying to you earlier, you know, I use it a lot on track and stuff now, yeah. and and it gets uh, an absolute pasting. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but it holds it up? Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it amazes me every time, yeah. to be honest, yeah. So have you done much to the engine itself? Is it pretty much standard? I mean, um, or? Yeah, so engine-wise, the, the bottom end is completely as it came out of the factory. Um, I've not done any bearings or anything like that on it. It's just as it, as it was. Um, the head's been completely rebuilt. Um, I've got a slightly uh, more aggressive cam. Yeah. Um, full stainless exhaust with four-branch manifold. Um, and that is about it for engine engine mods it's fairly standard yeah I mean, it, it's, it's really impressive particularly as you're tracking the car like it must take a decent amount of views and that clearly shows how good these engines are from the factory yeah uh, have you raised the rev limit at all or is it still no no it's i mean the cam the cam has helped a lot because as standard it would kind of tail off at like four and a half five grand okay, yeah. um and it would just rev but wouldn't go anymore um the cam isn't super aggressive it's quite a, a mild one so it's it's basically just it pulls hard all the way to the red red line now yeah. uh, it doesn't kind of tail off which is exactly what i wanted yeah, um, so i suppose out on the road that probably makes it quite interesting doesn't it as you get to the top of each gear it kind of makes it a bit more exciting exactly yeah. Off, yeah 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 it's great so i think horsepower wise did we say about 130 was about it? 130 yeah nothing nothing crazy yeah um i think like modern stuff today people you know if it hasn't got 300 horsepower yeah. people don't look at it exactly. but it's, it's quite crazy to be honest and we mentioned before the weight's around 950 kilos so yeah around that power to weight ratio it's, it's pretty decent uh but obviously this car is not about kind of out and out statistics is it so, no it's not at all no yeah. so i understand you try to adopt a bit of a club sport type spec with this car so yeah something obviously volkswagen didn't do from uh, from factory and obviously using it for track is that is that kind of allowing you to get the most out of it on the road and also kind of going into the track realm as well uh yes yeah, so i went down a bit of a club sport route um I'm, yeah, a bit of a purist at heart, so uh, I love kind of all the original stuff. Yeah. Um, like when I took it um, to have the cage put in, I had everything out of the car. Um, it literally had a steering wheel and the clocks were just zip tied up 
so yeah. I could get there. <laughs> yeah. um, and I drove it down and I just thought, what have I done? Yeah. This is horrendous. <laughs> and it was horrendous really, driving down. Really. Um, so that was definitely the confirmation that I needed that I wanted to keep the carpets in, keep yeah. the dash in, yeah. headlining, door cards, uh, and just almost make it like if VW were to have made uh, a Mark II Golf that was a, a bit of a track day car, yeah. you know, this is what kind of route they would have gone down. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I totally appreciate that as well, because actually, as time goes on, stuff like interior parts, they become rare, and a lot of people do do away with them. Yeah. So I think almost having that is makes it quite special. And I, and I love how you've basically got the exterior pretty much standard apart from these wheels again. These BMW yeah. wheels? Yeah, they're, they're from a, an E21 BMW, I believe. Yeah. Okay, I recognise um, the style now, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I absolutely love those, and on NS2R rubber as well. Yeah. That's some pretty, pretty hardcore stuff on the road, so how do you find that? Uh, they're, they're absolutely brilliant. The the for the weight of the car, I've had friends who've had them on other stuff, and have not liked them. Um, but for this car, the power, the weight, they're brilliant. They're really good in the in the wet and you know in the dry. They lap after lap after lap. Yeah. There's no yeah, no bother at all. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's, very it's very absolute, pleased with them. It's a fantastic build. Um, I really like everything you've done with it. I think it's, it's great as well. I can tell you're an enthusiast. I've seen <laughs> you driving on YouTube. You know what you're doing. So. Yeah, absolutely. I guess, well, there's only one place for this. Should we take it out on the road and see what's like? Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Nice one. The Mark II Golf GTI was introduced in 1984. It offers many advantages over the Mark I in the driving dynamics department. Initially, it featured a 1.8 litre inline four cylinder engine with two valves per cylinder producing 112 horsepower, as we see in James's car here except for the slight bump in power as noted. Some have regarded this model as a bit underwhelming, whereas others hold it in extremely high regard. Weight stands at around 960 kilos, which gives it a very favorable power to weight ratio. And this ultimately allowed for a 0 to 60 time of 8.4 seconds and a top speed of 120 miles an hour. Certainly impressive for its time. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think as well you were saying that it's it's really very balanced on track, isn't it? Front to rear, it seems like. I mean, when we were kind of coming down these roads earlier, the, the rear end of the car seems to really follow the front very, very well. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's got a, it's just standard anti-roll bars as well. So um, rear anti-roll bars can make these quite snappy at the back, and yeah. I, I didn't want that. Um, I have have been able to tune the suspension quite well to get the back to move as much as I want it to move. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, it's not snappy at all. It's uh, it's pretty well planted. Yeah, that sounds great. And I take it no understeer. There was certainly no hint of understeer when we were on here a few minutes ago. I take it that's fine on track as well. Yeah, no, it's it's yeah, it's front wheel drive. See, ultimately limited. You know, yeah. it's wrong wheel drive essentially. But um, for a front wheel drive car, it's yeah, it's pretty direct. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Certainly, when I was reading a bit about this engine, I'd certainly heard that you know there's more area under the curve, if you like. It's, it's delivering torque more at a given RPM. Yeah. So maybe Whoa. the 16 miles. But the cam and the well, the cam and the uh, exhaust manifold transformed it. Yeah. Apps. Well, like, did the <laughs> did the yeah. Uh... What's the power now? <laughs> Yeah, I did the cam and it felt amazing. Then yeah. exhaust manifold came after that and the stainless exhaust and that. It was like they both went and worked together, you know, producing the a bigger bang and getting the air out quicker, yeah. like yeah. made a massive difference. Yeah, yeah, it totally makes sense. And I think although the ride is, is stiff, it, it feels really well damped. Like it yeah. seems to just be able to deal with the bumps and not get unsettled. Which is uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that's when you know you've got a good suspension set up. Yeah. No, I'd definitely say it's probably uh, my favourite thing about the car anyway, is, yeah. is definitely the suspension. Not very forgiving these roads though. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose we better touch on the brakes slightly as well. Yeah. Have you just operated the pads? No, it's so they're off, uh, originally they were a two size were they two three eight mil discs okay, yeah. which are tiny um, so I've swapped those for brakes off a Corrado G60 which are 280 mil so that's I can get a bit of a bigger disc under a 15 inch wheel but not much yeah uh, they're just the standard uh, Corrado caliper so single pot caliper yeah um, they use uh, Frodo DS2 500 pads um, and yeah braided hoses bigger master cylinder from a C at a Beether, I believe it is. Okay, yeah. 22 mil uh, master cylinder. Um, and then the rear is just standard brakes. And I run uh, Tarox Strada pads, which are basically, they have the same bite as a standard pad. Yeah. Uh, but they can take more heat. Because uh, I had a bit of a, a bit of a moment in Germany oh, really? with uh, yeah, rear pads melting to the disc and <laughs> oh, causing man. me nearly to hit a barrier. Oh man, was that on, the, on the ring or? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was at the ring. So when you just go for the brakes and there was just nothing? Or? I went on the brakes and came off them to turn into a corner yeah. and the rears just kept grabbing. Oh man. And it, it was like someone just pulling the handbrake yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, luckily, oh, well, you there was a bit of room and a bit yeah, of... Uh, well, <laughs> it was complete, yeah. it was just instinct. I don't know what, I, I, when I came back to the pits, I, I said to my mates, I was like, oh, yeah, went this way, then went this way. And then I looked at the footage back and it just didn't do that at all. Yeah. It, went, it was so fast, it yeah. happened so fast. I think that's often the thing, isn't it? These things happen in one second, two seconds, and you just yeah. have to react. You don't know what you're doing, but. Yeah. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, well, I can certainly say, I, I, really like everything you've done to the car. I think it, it just works brilliantly. Uh, it seems to be fantastic on the road. Obviously, I can't come in on track, but I'm sure it's absolutely brilliant <laughs> as well. So, yeah, no, uh, very, very nice. Well, good, thank 
Thanks very much. Yeah, Cheers, mate. I think the important thing to note with a car like this is that performance figures are nowhere near the top of the list. Open one of these older Golf GTIs out on a good B road and you'll feel as connected to the road as can be. The 8 valve model still remains popular thanks to its wider torque spread, meaning the power is arguably more usable. Prices as of now start at around the £10,000 mark for something decent, with the best examples commanding £15,000 with ease. The question is then, is now the time to buy a Mark II Golf TTI before market forces inevitably drive the price into the next parallel?